Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the Common Sense Guys channel. Some of you may know me better as the Common Sense Guy, some of you will know me better as Jason. Today we're going to be, I'm sure you've had a look at the title otherwise you wouldn't have clicked on the video, but today is a story where I, I look at the state of the country, I look at the state of the ideological for a lack of better term, warfare that seems to be going on between opposing ideologies of supposed equality and people fighting for equal rights and equal representation, but yet always seems to be forcing somebody to lose a form of equality or lose a form of rights or force somebody not to express their own rights, feelings or opinions to be able to increase, entice, or promote other people's rights, or other people's versions of equalities. I, I don't know whether it's just me, or whether it's just how society seems to be going at the moment, but in general, how can you actually have a society that preaches the fact that it wants to be equal, but yet it's actually restricting what types of conversations that people in general can and cannot have at work. Now we're going to get into that very very soon but please don't forget to like, share and subscribe to this video, to this channel and just in general if you like what I'm doing. Now let's get on with the video and the fact of now in firms they're going to push for the idea that you are not allowed to talk about football or sports because women. So coming to you from the BBC, because, you know, how else? The Chartered Management Institute head, Anne Frackle, or Frankel, said sports banter can exclude women and lead to laddish behaviour such as chat about sexual conquest. Okay, so can shopping and other stereotypical things to describe what women may or may not talk about exclude men? from joining in in their conversations? Or is this just about how the women feel that they're excluded? They could quite easily brush up on their sports if they wanted to be included in the conversation. At this minute in time before we go any further, Anne is actually saying that because they are talking about sports, that this can exclude women and it can lead to boyish behaviour, laddish behaviour, and somehow that's a bad thing or is alluding to the point that it's a bad thing. So carrying on from the actual story, it states a lot of women, as she states and quotes, a lot of women in particular feel left out, she told the BBC Today's programme on BBC Radio 4. So again, a lot of women in particular feel left out? Are you projecting much? Do a lot of women want to talk about football or sports? What about the women that do love football, that do love sports? Are they feeling left out? Do they actually want to even participate? You're assuming so much in your assumption, that lack of better word, to begin with, that it is absolutely ludicrous that you'd actually put this down as a statement. That because some people want to talk about something, that the person who doesn't know about that thing is now being excluded. But because it's sport, it's okay to talk about and exclude. Now, taking this to a logical conclusion and doing a complete 180 or reverse on it, can you imagine if I or somebody else come out and said, right, I don't want women in offices, in HR offices, to be able to talk about shopping, food, old partners, their husbands, family, 
why they're at work because I don't know what's going on and I feel that I'm excluded from the conversation as I don't know much about it. So I don't want women to be able to talk about this. Putting that into context, how much of a backlash do you reckon that they would actually receive from the general public because it's to do about telling women what they can and cannot do? We're on the reverse. This is telling what men they can and cannot do and how that is somehow a good and noble thing but the opposite isn't. And before anybody goes on to the fact of saying, well, you shouldn't be mentioning that anyway, I'm not actually advocating for anybody to forcibly stop conversations or from firms stopping conversations in general. It is not an advocation that I would be pushing for. So carrying on with another of Anne's quotes from the BBC story, which will be linked down below. They don't follow these sports and they don't like either being forced to talk about them or not being included. So carrying on from this logically, trying to anyway, women apparently according to Anne don't follow these sports and they don't like being forced to talk about them. In other words, men actually trying to include them into the conversation apparently isn't men trying to include them into the conversation or people including them in the conversation, expecting them to join in with a bit of banter or enjoy it, having a conversation. But apparently that isn't men actually trying to include women into the conversation. And according to Anne, they don't like being forced to include them, be included in the conversation apparently either. Now, again, you don't have to be forced. But if somebody's asking you what your opinion is or trying to talk around you or something like that and just generally ask what's your opinion, then you're not being forced to enter the conversation. People are trying to include you. But hey, again, moving on to the next bit, or not being included in the conversation. Kind of seems to completely and utterly counteract your statement from what you've just said, Anne. That they are being forced to be included in the conversation or they're not being included. I mean, where do you go with that type of logic? Where do you go? So, carrying on again, this is another of Anne's quotes. I have nothing against sports enthusiasts or cricket fans. That's great, she said. But the issue is, many people want cricket fans, she added, arguing bosses should crack down on sports banter. Most people don't go and talk about all of their children all of the time, about what they did in recitals and things like that. But nobody's saying that they should be cut out of the offices or anything. Nobody's saying in general that these conversations, as long as they don't interfere with things, shouldn't be happening. You are. You feel that it's something to do with exclusion. Even though just specifically beforehand, a couple of lines before, you actually say that men are including women, but they don't feel that like they're being included. I mean, what kind of contradiction is that in itself? What kind of tyranny is that, where you're telling people what they can and cannot talk about in their time of work, as long as it doesn't interfere with productivity? I just don't get where this is going from, what that frame of logic actually stems from. Apparently she is saying that it's a gateway to more alleged behaviour and if it goes unchecked it's a signal of a more laddish culture to talk about and be excited about sports is apparently inducive to a laddish culture. So no women nowhere talk about sports. It's completely to do with a laddish culture to talk about sports. No women whatsoever go away talking about track, football, rugby, tennis, or any of that situations whatsoever. It's all men. It's amazing to me that people that actually push the ideas of equality, the ideas of getting away from stereotypes, are generally the ones that when they are arguing for something, push the idea of stereotypes as their basis for argumentation. Oh, this is induces of malness. This is inducive of a laddish culture. Because no women would ever do this, even though they do regularly and should do more. It's very easy for it to escalate from VAR talk, as in uh, video assisted refereeing, to slap each other on the back and talk about their conquests at the weekend. So taking something that is completely and utterly about sports 
are then going about their conquests at the weekend. Wouldn't women in general be able to, if they do that type of thing, actually then go into talking about their conquests if that's what they wanted to talk about? Again, it's absolutely amazing to me that these types of people that are pushing to be able to break the stereotypes, to push away the idea of what the gender roles are, always push and stick to the stereotypes. Why wouldn't women want to do this type of thing? Why wouldn't they talk about what that type of situation is? If they want to, you are assuming that they do not want to. But you know, assumptions make an ass out of you and me. So apparently, Miss Frankel does not think sports chatter should be banned. It should just be moderated. She said that good managers should be inclusive and ensure that everyone in their team feels comfortable. Wait, so if you're forcing somebody to not be able to talk about something, those people that you're forcing them to not be able to talk about those things, do you think that they feel comfortable about being told that they cannot talk about something? That generally has no bearing on work whatsoever. That is something akin to, oh, did you watch my kid's uh, recital? I've got a video for it at home. Or, oh, did you notice how much the milk's gone down? It is literally exactly the same. It has nothing to do with work whatsoever, but yet they're conversations that people have. You want to restrict them because you don't feel that you're able to talk about them and it makes you or you feel that it makes other people uncomfortable. But yet you don't care about how it makes the other people uncomfortable when you're restricting them from talking about it. So sports journalist Jackie Oatley says that it's a terrible idea. If you ban football chat or banter of any description, then you are going to do is alienate the people who actually want to communicate with each other, she told the Today programme. Which I completely not really agree. The main thing is with this is that it's being gendered. In the day and age where they are trying to say that gender doesn't matter in general anymore, which, again, agree or disagree, that's completely up to you, but using the logic in which they're trying to follow and trying to keep it on a consistent basis, if they are trying to deconstruct the idea of gender, why are they not focusing on the idea of it being more inclusive? Include more women in the idea of talking about sports, as she already alluded to in the actual piece in itself that she was saying that they are being included but because they're not up to speed on what's going on they feel that they're being excluded from it it just makes no sense but again another form of tyranny another form of trying to belittle men and their let's use her terminology so shall we laddish culture and trying to beat actual masculinity in general or forms of out of society. If we're trying to produce an equal society, we need to understand what makes us different, accept those differences, and encompass them to come together. Now, if you don't want to talk about certain things, then you don't have to. But to ban those types of talk from work is absolutely ludicrous. Would you say the same thing if somebody says that we shouldn't be talking about religion or any specific religions to begin with? Would you say that that shouldn't be included in workplace as well? What about politics? What about other form of social commentary talking about what's going on in your local area? Is that allowed? Where does it stop if you start regulating speech on what you can and what you cannot talk about? The fact that you're trying to do this as a gender political identity angle is absolutely amazing to me and absolutely amazing that you thought that it would actually be a good thing to produce to the public. But that, ladies and gentlemen, is just the opinion of some guy on the internet. What do you guys think? Let me know down below in the comment section. I've been the Common Sense Guy. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Please do like, share and subscribe to this video and to this channel. Thank you very much. Speak to you all again real soon. Bye-bye for now.